morning, good afternoon, and good evening. My name is Sir Meerkat, and welcome back to the Motor Meerkat channel. As I teased you in last week's video, today I'm going to be looking into Caterham F1 and why they decided to abandon their Formula 1 factory. Now, I had loads of people messaging me on my social medias, which are linked below in the description, by the way, if you do fancy chucking me a little follow. But yeah, people were super excited to see me cover this aspect of the Malaysian businessman Tony Fernandez's empire. If you'd like to know a bit more about the other side of Tony Fernandez's empire and about Lotus F1, and also learning about the debacle that he had with Lotus cars that led to the creation of the Caterham F1 team, then I'll leave a link down in the description to last week's video where I talk all about that, and there'll also be a card in the top right corner of your screen right now that you can click on to. But long story short, Fernandez is a hard-hitting businessman with two above-average years under his belt as the owner of Team Lotus in Formula 1, with Jarno Trulli and Heike Kovalainen as his drivers. When Fernandez acquired Caterham cars on the 27th of April 2011, it would create the Caterham Group. And it seemed only right to use his Formula 1 team to push the new intellectual property that he owned. Especially as he really had no reason to use the Lotus name other than sort of legitimising his team. And that was no longer really needed as Fernandez's team now had some experience and were sort of able to build their own brand. And this would allow for the Caterham brand to be thrust into the highest tier of motorsport, Formula 1. Fernandez changed the name of his Formula 1 team from Team Lotus to Caterham F1 for the 2012 season. And on the 18th of January 2012, it was announced that the team would be moving from their factory at Racing Technology Norfolk, which was around 10 minutes from the Lotus Cars factory. But as they were no longer affiliated, they decided to move away. No need to be near the Lotus Cars if you're not making a Lotus car. And instead, they would move to Leafield Technical Centre in Oxfordshire, which was the Arrows factory until about 2002, and also the Super a Guri factory from 2006 to 2008, which is also the factory that would end up being abandoned. But whoa, 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 hold up. We're getting a bit too far ahead of ourselves in this story. Back to the 2012 season. On February the 17th, it was announced that Heike Kovalainen would continue to race at Caterham, but with young Russian driver Vitaly Petrov newly alongside him, obviously replacing Jarno Trulli. And those drivers wouldn't exactly have any standout performances, to be honest, with the team finishing 10th in the constructors for that year, ahead of fellow Batmarker teams Marussia and HRT. For the 2013 season, the Caterham team would seriously change up their driver lineup, dropping Kovalainen to reserve driver and dropping Petrov out of the team and out of Formula One entirely. This made way for two new drivers, one being Charles Peake and the other being Twitter banterous man Guido van der Gaard. Even with this new lineup, Caterham would actually do worse in 2013 than they had done in 2012, finishing 11th in the championship behind Marussia, who they'd finished ahead of the previous year. But at least they'd beaten HRT, I guess, but that was only because HRT had actually left the sport at the end of the previous year. So as a last ditch attempt, Caterham would again change their lineup for 2014 with Marcus Ericsson and Kamui Kobayashi taking those two seats. And Fernandez would actually warn team members that if results did not improve over the season, he would quit. And that is exactly what happened. Despite the fact that the design team had decided to strap a, shall we say, female pleasure device onto the nose cone? The real question is, did they have to lube it up before it went out on track? <laughs> And fun meerkat fact for you, after the 2014 Monaco Grand Prix, Caterham would actually become the record holders for the most race starts without scoring a single point. Well, there you go, Mr. Fernandez. At least you're in the record book somewhere. And in July, Tony Fernandez sold the Caterham team to a consortium of Swiss and Middle Eastern investment. This consortium being one of few that's not actually led by Lawrence Stroll. And even with all of this new investment into the team, it didn't stop Caterham from meeting its demise. And on the 21st of October, midway through the season, in fact, it was announced that the team had gone into administration. Bernie Eccleston actually gave Caterham specific dispensation to miss the US Grand Prix and the Brazilian 
Brazilian Grand Prix while they attempted to find a buyer, meaning they would not have any penalties imposed on them. Who says Bernie isn't kind? Come on. And Caterham, they would get desperate, to be honest. They would end up actually crowdfunding the money needed to go to the final race in Abu Dhabi. And to be fair, they actually ended up reaching the goal that they needed. Companies that are donated a high enough amount or sort of were above a certain threshold were able to have their company logo on the Caterham F1 car. Rather than big companies sponsoring them like we would usually expect to see in Formula 1, such as, I don't know, Shell or Moe Shandon, on the Caterham car for the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, we had sponsors such as the Windmill Inn, which was a small pub in Littleworth in South Sussex. Will Stevens would actually be drafted in to drive for Caterham in Abu Dhabi. He previously tested for the team, but he would only actually finish 17th or last on the road at the race. With teammate Kobayashi retiring on lap 42 with reports of serious vibrations. I think it might be a front wing, to be honest, mate. And with zero points scored in that final round of the season, and Caterham still unable to find a buyer for the team, assets would be begin to be sold off at an auction. But this auction would actually have to be cancelled because it turned out some of the items that were being sold in the lots were not actually owned by the Caterham F1 team. And in a surprising turn of events, Romulus Colles would end up buying the team from the consortium for one measly pound. Now, the team wasn't just everything for a pound. Remember, they had millions and millions and millions of pounds of debt that he would then have to pay off. So it wasn't really a pound. And Romulus had actually swept the floors at the factory. That was his old job. And he managed to earn a bit of bob, I mean, get a pound and was able to buy the team. But after this sale, the consortium claimed that they were not actually the owners of the team after all and the team remained property of Tony Fernandez because he had not complied with the legal obligation to transfer the shares that he had in Caterham F1 to the consortium. Thus, this would make the transaction that they'd agreed completely void and would mean that Fernandez would have to take on the debt of the Formula 1 team. But obviously, Fernandez completely disputed this claim and while the dispute was being sorted between Fernandez and the consortium, the administrators held on to the assets for Caterham F1, including the factory, which was locked up and just sort of left. And as the debate was going on for some time, relatively soon after the collapse of the team, the site would begin to look more and more and more overgrown with paint falling off the exterior of the factory. But overall in these photos, to be fair, it looks all right. It doesn't really look that abandoned. The inside of it looks pretty nice. They still got plaques on the doors of some of the rooms and that hallway looks pretty clean, to be honest. I mean, it's cleaner than my room right now. Over time, however, scrappers and vandals would obviously end up making their way into the property. They always do. And this meant that the ceiling especially was left completely mangled, as you can see in this video with pipes and wires being completely ripped out and just sort of strewn across the hallways now. Big shout out to the big Bearded Explorer, whose footage this is that you're seeing right now. He's allowed me to use this footage from his video of when he ventured into the facility in 2018. So again, huge thank you to him. You can check out his channel down in the description. But the Bearded Explorer manages to find huge amounts of broken glass in seemingly every room. They've just tried to smash through everything. They've completely trashed the simulator room, which is so sad. I don't think the Bearded Explorer quite knew what it was when he went in. But as you can see, the 360 surround for the screen where the simulator would move around and make sure it was super realistic for the F1 drivers to, to train. And you can also see plenty of F1 murals scattered around the building, such as one showing off the calendar of Formula 1. I'm assuming possibly the 2014 calendar, as that is when the factory closed. And also one showing two Caterham cars racing down the hallway, producing the Caterham colour scheme on the carpet. There were even Heike Kovalainen signed cards that were just sort of left strewn across the floor, which the Beard Explorer was able to pick up, and even carbon fibre moulds for the Formula 1 car that were just left outside, uh, across, the, across the, the floor, and also in some old abandoned shed. Now, as I said, I would highly recommend going and watching the video. It's only 20 minutes. It's super, super interesting to see what has happened to the factory, and to be fair, this video was two years ago, so it's now 2020. That was 2018. It could be even more run down now, which is, again, super, super sad to see. I would love to see an F1 team buy it up and begin using the facilities again, 
but it's just so run down and ruined that I don't think it's ever going to happen. So I think the highly technologically advanced facility is going to continue being reduced to rubble. But there we have it. That is the story of just why Caterham abandoned their F1 factory and left it to completely fall apart. Would you ever like to see the Caterham name back in Formula 1? Be sure to let me know down in the comments below. Like this video if you did enjoy it and be sure to go and watch what was basically the part one of this video on my channel, The Curious Case of Lotus in Formula 1. I hope you really enjoy that one. And also subscribe to the channel while you're at it because you don't want to miss any of my future uploads. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I'll see all of you meerkats later. Goodbye, guys.